Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again, and today we're still going in Phyrexia will be one land. Tomorrow's one is going to be different, I promise you. So keep an eye out for tomorrow's video. Today, though, we're going to go Vizgraz the Doom Hive, and that is the card we are talking about right now. So, Vizgraz, if you don't know what it does, two white, black, and a green for a 3 3 with Menace and Toxic 1. Players dealt combat damage, get a poison counter, you know this. Um, and when Vizgraz has Doom Hive enters the battlefield, create three 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Mirror artifact creature tokens with Toxic, and this creature can't block. Mm. Um, but Vizgraz gets plus one, plus one for each poison counter your opponents have. Nice. What do we want to do with this deck? We want to poison our opponents out as quickly as possible. And to do that, we need to abuse the Toxic and the Artifact token creation stuff. So, it's going to be, this deck today, something that's probably going to be the most common build of Vizgraz going forward. A token Toxic deck. So, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'll give you a second, then we'll go into the deck tech. Okay, you've had your second. Right, so, Vizgraz, here we go. As usual, with one of my deck techs, here comes the mana destruct the breakdown. Destruction? Breakdown, let's go with that. Blooming Marsh, Bountiful Promenade, you can work it out from there. Black, green, and white lands all the way through the deck, including Field of the Dead, because, you know, we're going to need some sort of blockers eventually, and we might as well have zombie ones with all the tokens we're going to be to, you know, token doublers we've got coming up. Um, we've got Gavany Township to pump everything up a little bit. Uh, Godless Shrine, the Triome from... Uh, where is it? Leo Behemoth, that's it. Wherever it is, Ikoria. That's the one I'm looking for. Um, Isolated Chapel, Jungle Hollow. Miraku's in as well, just do some card draw. And Mirex. Mirex is kind of key in this deck. Three mana, get to make a might. Yeah, that's pretty good in this deck, to be fair. So, you know, Mirex is something I suggest people pick up before the um, cost of it goes up and up and up. We've got I've Grown Tomb, all the best fit Path of Ancestry, the usual selection, you know, Radiqui Towers here, Temple of the False Gods here. But we are playing both Urborg and Yavimaya in this deck just to help us out a bit more to smooth the mana a little bit further. Ramp side of things, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and then each of the talismans of the respective colour pairs. They've come into here. We've also got Cultivate, Anchor Dome's Reach to go and find some of the basic lands. We are playing four of each in this deck, so it kind of makes sense. But we've also got one other bit of ramp. Collective Voyage. I've got into this card, I have to say. It's going to start turning up in more green decks as things go through. I'm quite happy to help my opponents ramp. It makes the games a little bit quicker and a little bit more interesting. But it really does help you sort your mana issues out and it's worth playing. If you haven't got one yet, I suggest you go and pick one up. So, the rest of the deck is here. And let's just quickly go through the cards. So, Crawling Chorus, obviously, it's got Toxic. Leaves a Might behind when it dies. Um, Billow Skull Wielder as well. Death Touch and Toxic 1. So, Death Touch and Toxic 1 is a nice combination. It's, you know, people are not going to block it with something big. Or they're going to block it with something small that's going to set them back, like an elf or a wall or something or other. Um, and the toxic one's quite nice, so, you know, bear it in mind. Infested Flesh Cutter is a really nice bit of equipment for this type of deck. Quick Creature gets plus two, plus zero, and whenever it attacks, get a Might. Yeah, it's not much. And it's not much to equip either at three mana, so it's pretty good. But it works so well with this guy. John Bold Duelist, Double Strike, Toxic One. Yeah, we like that plan. Um, the Hive's in, we might as well use this as well. Creatures, to be honest, as long as an opponent you has three or more poison counters, creatures you control with Toxic have Lifelink. So that really does help us. Okay, bit of a new version of Bitter Blossom. Is it better than Bitter Blossom? I think the jury's still out on that, to be honest. But at the end of the day, we get our Toxic little tokens to get the poison going. Black Belly Rat, um, when it dies, it proliferates. Necrogen Communion is a special one. I'm just going to spend some time, just a few seconds, talking about this more than I would do normally. I like this card. Yes, it gives something toxic too. Fine. Cope with that. It's a toxic deck after all. You expect to see it. But the ability for two mana to put it on a creature and then return it to the battlefield when that creature dies, or return the creature when it dies, is amazing um i've picked it up in drafts i've played a little bit of in standard 
and it just does the job so well. People have to spend two removal spells to get rid of the creature, or they have to have some way of exiling things when it goes to the graveyard, so on and so forth. But it's just great. Um, yeah, okay, it's in a commander deck. You might not see it that often, but if you can get it on something, it's going to really help you protect your stuff. So bear that in mind. I really do like it. Anyway, enough of the aside for a second. Um, Pestilal Southerners here, Flying Toxic 1. Yep, Little Flyer. And obviously the Branch Blight Stalkers here as well with Toxic 2. Yes, it's a 3 1, so it's not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, it's Toxic 2. And it is 3, and it does, you know. Okay, dies very easily to anything with first strike, but yeah. It'll get there. Arcane Signet, I've mentioned as Ramp. Swift Foot Boots, there you go, I said it right for a change, is purely here to protect Vizgraz. Now, we don't mind if Vizgraz dies a couple of times. It does get expensive to recast it because you do get, you know, pay five mana for the equivalent of six powers worth of creatures. That's fine. Seven mana for six powers worth of creatures. That's fine as well. Once it gets beyond that, nine mana for six creatures, power, not great. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we've got a way to protect it, the boots will hopefully do that. Charge of the Mites is just a fun removal spell. Again, it's another card I've been playing quite a lot of in draft. And it actually works really well. And we do have a way of making a lot of creatures in this deck. And you are going to take out some creatures or planeswalkers with it. But at the end of the day, if you need an extra couple of Mites, it gives you the couple of Mites you may need to get through. Inquiry, just make sure everyone gets a poison counter that way. Okay, yes, it costs you two life, but hopefully you'll nullify that with, you know, Hive. Um, the Hive Master's got Toxic One, comes when it dies, it leaves behind another Mite, fantastic. Frexian Crusader, the original creature um, with poison, well, Toxic is infecting here. First Strike, Pro Red, Pro White, and Infect, yep. Punches through a lot, there's a lot of Pro White decks around at the moment because of one card we're coming to shortly. Awakening Zone I've included just so I can get some ramp on, really. The blockers are quite nice. It gives us some tokens to block with. Like I say, we've got ways of making more tokens. So having this come into play and giving us that little bit of mana really does help. Growing Rights of Imlatech. Go and find one of the creatures we really need, and then it will flip quite readily. And with the amount of tokens we're producing, we'll be getting a lot of mana off this. Basilisk, yeah, Death Touch and Toxic. Yeah, we've got... A lot of the toxic creatures in the set, they're in the colours in the deck, so bear that in mind. Viral spawning is also, it's not a creature, it's a sorcery, but it does give us a 3-3 beast with toxic. And we can flash it back as long as we've got someone who's um, corrupted, so that's good. Atheros, God of Passage, is something of an inclusion that I've added since I started building the deck. I'm not really worried about turning it into a god. The 5-4, if it becomes into play is really helpful but it's the whole second ability whenever another creature you own dies return it to your hand unless someone pays three life they may pay the three life but it's three life you know that they've not then got to deal with so yeah we'll see anyway here come the doublers we've got anointed procession we have got parallel lives and we have got doubling season i am playing them all in this deck i really want to make sure i'm maximizing the amount of mites i can get especially when i drop this guy into play so Hence why they're all here. Indoctrine attendance also here. Yes, you can return something. It is quite useful to return something, something yeah, like a soul ring to replay the soul ring, have the extra mana maybe. And it gives you a might, so I wouldn't return anything I'm really concerned about, but it's worth having there. The might overseers here, as long as it's your turn, creature tokens you control get plus one, plus zero, and have first strike. So that really helps your mites punch through. And the three mana four mana ability so well two life and three mana or a white and three to get another might yeah i can cope with that smothering tithe yeah i've had to play in this deck we need to get the mana ramp on um and the treasure tokens will help leyline and meeks a bit of an automatic inclusion makes all our tokens bigger automatically um automatic inclusion automatically i've used the same word automatically several times there very bad of me but Giving all our tokens plus one, plus one, isn't something to be sneezed at in this deck, especially when some of them can't block, so we do need to punch through. That's why Mondrak Glory of Dominus is also here as well, to make sure... To make sure we get... Sorry, I was yawning then. To make sure we do get those extra tokens as things go along. Yeah, so sorry. Text message if this video now gets a bit distorted. Yeah, extra tokens, always great. So... Sheldred's Head Cleaver, another toxic creature. It's also got minutes, so it's easy, a little bit easier to punch through. Plague Nurse. 
kind of a key card in this deck. It's only common, but paying three mana to make every other creature gain toxic again. Um, every other creature we control with toxic gains another toxic one until the end of the turn, so they stack. If you've got a load of mites in play, that means those mites are technically toxic too, um, which will make everything a little bit harder for your opponent to deal with, and you'll get there a bit quicker. Triumph for the Hordes. I think if we're going to do this, if we're going to go down the hole, let's poison everyone to death deck, we might as well have the key card that's been around for ages. Um, until the end of the turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, gain, trample, and infect. Now, I'm not 100% sure how infect and toxic stack together. If you know, can you leave me a comment down below? But I'm pretty sure having infect and toxic means they get toxic counters and count poison counters from infect as well. So you're doubling up on it, with a, if my memory serves correctly. Rhea, Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. I know I did a deck tech about it the other week, uh, but this one is purely around the mic generation. We are going to put this on the biggest creature and hopefully get in with it. We want the mites, obviously, with Anointed Procession, Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, we're going to get more mites from it, so it made sense to include it here. Death Reap Ritual is a whole thing that one of my followers on my stream, um, a gentleman who goes by the name of Primal, had it. Oh, sorry, I've moved off it that was bad of me by the name primal who turns up you'll see him play me on my stream occasionally he had included this in his version of his grass yesterday when we were playing when he played it against me and i hadn't even thought about morbid creatures so i went and quickly picked one up and chucked in my deck as well because i figured it was worth having in the deck um going down from there we've got the necrogenic rock priest as well um makes we give means we get more poison counters <laughs> <coughs> Growing ranks is here just to populate so we can grow our tokens a little bit. I quite like growing ranks. I haven't played it that often, so I slipped it in here as one of the extras, so like 95th card, I think. I've got Ixil, Senior of Atraxa as well. Um, you could, you know, again, these two commanders are interchangeable, a bit like the deck I talked about the other day. But I've decided that I want to go with Viz Graz as the commander in here and leave Ixil in the deck. You can swap them over if you want to. It still works the same way. It's just the corrupted ability of Excel is a little bit more um, mana intensive. Let's go with that thing instead of making creatures. I want to kill people with creatures, not go down the combo route with this. So hence why we're in here. Ribskift um, is, a, is a vehicle that you can crew um, and enter back. It replaces itself when it comes in, so that's quite nice. And then we can crew it for three. You know, we can tap three of our mites if we need to to get it on the go for a 4-4 four, four with Toxic 2. So it seemed like a no-brainer. Obviously, we're in white in here. We're in white, black, and green. So it's a bit of a no-brainer for me not to have Elish Norn in here. Um, we are hopefully going to have Elish Norn in play. We are going to cast Viz Grads. We are going to get six instead of three tokens. If we get six with Anointed of Procession, it goes up to 12. It just gets silly really quickly. So it's a bit of a no-brainer from my point of view not to include it. So hence why they are here. Likewise, Ballisca Shepherd is only hits a 3-3 three, three flyer, which isn't great. But it does come in with two mites. So you're paying five mana for five power, and I'm happy with that trade-off. Kinzu that you saw in the deck tech of yesterday um, is also in this deck because you know we can get our creatures killed off and have them turned into little toxic creatures so it seems like a reasonable inclusion and Skithrix the Blight Dragon yeah if you're going to play a toxic deck or an infect deck you probably need Skithrix somewhere in the deck as well I mean just the one black mana to give it haste you know so six mana you're basically paying for this and you're going to get it for four poison on the turn it hits someone you can't beat it Varok um, is also in here. I put it in because it had toxic spores in the um, flavor text box for no other reason. But it's another 3-3 three, three flyer for 5. But at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, each opponent loses 3 life. People are going to block your things quite readily. They are going to block all your little tokens coming at them with their toxicity. And so they will kill them. And yeah, you can make them lose 3 life instead. It might get you there in the end. Who knows? Doubling seasons I've mentioned. Um, Tyrannix of Atrocity, another toxic creature. This is toxic three. Four, four for haste for five mana. Cope with that. Mirari's Wake helps us pump up our, our little toxic guys as things come along and doubles up our mana, which is important in this deck, believe it or not. And Song of the World Soul, another way to populate. Again, a card I haven't played that often, but I think it's just fantastic. It is here really to just, well, it's, there's only one thing it can topple off is our little mites as we do it, um, our Frexian mites. Yeah, 
but we play a spell and we get to populate and we do have a lot of cheap spells as well when we get there so hopefully we'll be able to populate a lot of them up quite happily moving on um goliath hatchery enters the battlefield you get to put two three three green phyrexian beast creatures with toxic one into play and at the beginning of your upkeep an opponent has three or more poison counters choose a creature you control then draw cards equal to its toxic value worst case scenario you'll draw one best case scenario three two gotta try it out haven't you um ethereal absolution pumps up our creatures makes all our opponents creatures smaller and we get to exile cards from their graveyard to get some spirits to get some damage in casualties of war to control the board a little bit notice in this deck i'm not um, playing any of the maths wrath effects or anything and so forth i really want to stay away from them for a change um so there's no damnation wrath of god day of judgment so on and so forth um but casualties war is there to fill that hole a little bit because you know eight six mana and destroy one of everything may be the end maybe what we need to do to win the game tyrannus rex i did go and pick one up especially for this deck um you know trample ward four haste toxic four for an eight eight for seven mana yes thank you where do i sign up thank you very much i'll do that um Ankea, intangible slayer i decided to include in here mainly because it gives away it gains some life um the plus two for the every, each opponent loses three we gain three is really nice zero to draw a couple yes it gives everyone a scry um so it's those two but it's also hexproof so it's really the only way they can kill it is through combat damage yeah which isn't hard when your mites can't block i realize that but eight who's going to send a load of creatures to this and do eight damage to it because the turn it comes in you're going to put it up to plus two unless you really need some cards in your hand um in which case well that's your own fault anyway to finish off the deck um i went with the twilights so i thought we'd have a bit of fun have one of each of the twilights we've got green sun's twilight in um to go and find a creature or land hopefully we can get it over x's five so we can put them both into play we've got black sun's twilight to kill something off that's annoying us um you know some of the indestructible stuff springs to mind and obviously then returning something and obviously finally yeah we want mites we get mites with this x wants you will not cast this card however unless x is five or more you want those mites you want to make sure you can blow the board up yes it is a kind of a wrath effect i said we weren't playing many off but this one's a special one i think you'll agree getting up to seven mana with this deck with the amount of ramp we have isn't particularly difficult especially if we've got procession parallel lives doubling season in play this gives us 10 20 might tokens which then everyone gets a heart attack about attacking through next turn so but that's it that's my version of vish agraz the doom hive i hope you've enjoyed today's video i hope you've hit the like and subscribe button please help me subscribe you know i'm sitting as i record this today on where am i today the 11th of march i'm sitting at 142 subscribers i'd really like to try and get that up by the end of march to you know I'm not going to be too greedy. You know, a thousand, no. Uh, by the end of March, if I get to a thousand, I'll be jumping around and doing this full time for a job. Probably not going to happen that quickly. Um, but if I get up to 150, 160 by the end of March, I'll be happy. So if you haven't been here before, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Help me out a little bit. But that's it. I'll be back tomorrow with another Deck Tech. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know what I've missed down below in the comments. And I'll see you hopefully on my stream. There's a link to that in the description down below. Cheers. See you later. Bye.